So we've slightly adjusted our posting schedule and we have a new channel dropping. Sundays are our new Roseanville main account posting day where we do the cut in halves. Mondays are the new Roseanville 2 channel days where it's a longer format, Q and A's, interviews, stuff like that. Thursdays remain still a main channel cut in half day. And then Saturday is the launch of the new channel. And the new channel is called Roseanville Builds, where we're gonna take cobbling to the most extreme. And by cobbling, I mean cobbling. We bought a bunch of really cool old equipment so we can round out the information and show you guys not just the finished product being cut in half, but show you how boots and shoes are actually made and make some of the wackiest stuff ever. And the first video drops this Saturday. You can go subscribe, there's no videos yet, so it'd help out if you go subscribe. But thank you guys for your support and look out for that video on Saturday. These Solivares are in many people's opinions, the real Doc Martens or the Doc Martin killers because they're allegedly built to the same standard that Doc Martin used to make their boots to before they sold out. So we're gonna dissect this boot and run it through our test to see why people have started buying Solivares instead of Doc Martin boots. And to really understand why people call them the real Doc Martens, you have to understand Solivares history that dates all the way back to the 1800s because in 1881 in Northamptonshire, England, five men in the village of Wollaston created a cooperative called Northamptonshire Productive Society, or NPS for short, and secured a year-long contract to make army boots for the government. And then in 1899, NPS grew to 80 employees as demand increased, forcing them to move to a new factory, which they're still in today. Then they continued to make footwear and grow their business for the first half of the 1900s. And this is where their history starts to become inter intertwined with Doc Martens. Because if you remember from the recent Doc Martin video, the German doctor, Dr. Martin, creates the air cushioning technology in 1945. And by 1959, they were looking to expand their business and license out their technology. And then in 1960, Bill Griggs acquires a license to make Doc Martin boots, and but they didn't have the machinery or technology to make the airwear soles. But there was a company in the region that could make them, and that was NPS. So throughout the 60s, Dr. Martin boots were made with Griggs uppers and NPS outsoles with the name Doc Martin by Solivare. So it was a bit of a chimera of the Dr. Martin license from Germany, the Griggs uppers who bought the license, and then the NPS outsoles who were contracted by Griggs who bought the license from Dr. Martin to make Dr. Martin by Solivare. And if you don't know what the word Solivare is or where it came from, it's just literally a shortened fun version of Soul of Air Solivare. And NPS continued to make footwear under the license for 35-ish years until the 90s. And then in 1995, their contract was up with Doc Martin and NPS trademarked the name Solivare and continued to make Doc Martin-esque boots because at the time in the mid 90s, Doc Martens were all the rage. Everyone was wearing them. So they tried to capture a portion of that market by selling Solivare boots. But soon the popularity started to wane. Doc Martin started looking at foreign production. And then in 2003, once again, if you remember from the Doc Martin videos, Doc Martens were struggling and they cut a thousand jobs in England and moved the vast majority of the production overseas. And then 2006 for Solivare, they were struggling in a very similar way and just about went out of business until Ivan Tilly, a local, purchased Solivare Solivare and helped it survive. And then from 2006 up until today, NPS and Solivare have been thriving because they found that little niche of making the real Doc Martin boots. So now that you know the history, you can understand why people consider Solivare to be the true Doc Martens, the Doc Martin killers, the real Doc Martens, because those high quality docks that built the brand in the 80s and 90s were built by Solivare. They didn't move production to foreign countries. They allegedly didn't change a lot of the production styles and techniques and materials. So now it's time to see if that's actually true by analyzing the materials of this boot, starting with the leather first. So the things that I'm looking at to judge this leather are thickness, cross section, and performance. With the Solivares being about 2.2 millimeters thick and the Doc Martens being about 1.8 to 2 millimeters thick. So in theory, the Solivare should last a little bit longer and be more durable because it's just marginally thicker. If you look at the cross section between the two of these, you can see that the patent layer of plastic on top is about the same thickness. So you're not gonna get any more top coat durability out of the Solivares. But if you look at the actual leather aspect, you can see that the Solivares have a little bit more of that structural grain pattern. That is that really fine fiber structure at the top of leather that gives it its smooth texture that holds all those really loose, uh, big suede fibers together. So even though they both have a similar top coat of plastic, the Solivare leather has a little bit better cross section. And one thing that's hard to really show on screen is the difference of quality of leather. 
because even though they're similar cross sections and similar plastic coatings, the feel of these two leathers are really different. The Doc Martens have an almost foamy, empty, dry feel to them, versus the Solivares have a lot more conditioning worked into the leather, making it more malleable and a little bit more conditioned to the touch. And that means the Solivares are gonna be a little bit more durable and long lasting, because the way I visualize this is a dry, foamy leather is like breaking a dry uh, tree branch, versus a conditioned and saturated leather, it's more like trying to break a green tree branch. It's a lot harder, it bends more before those fibers actually start breaking. So do the tests reflect the extra durability because of the saturation and extra thickness? Well, we did the flame test and both top coats acted about the same. We did the puncture test and they acted about the same as well, but the Doc Martens had a little bit better score. I think that's because of how dry the Doc Martin leather is. It seems to be a pretty common trend with this test. The drier the leather, the harder it is to puncture through but the harder it is to break in and the less durable it's gonna be versus the more conditioned, the more that puncture glides through the leather. So you lose a little bit of the puncture resistance by having a conditioned leather, but overall, I'd way rather have a long lasting, more durable conditioned leather than a dry puncture resistant leather. So leather wise, the sole of airs are a little bit thicker, a little bit more grain and a little bit more saturated, making it a superior leather. Then if we start looking at the inside of the boots, one of my biggest gripes with docks is this really terrible counter cover. And counter covers are there to help reinforce one of the highest wear spots inside of a boot, which is right at your heel where it starts slipping. And with docks being a very big, loose upper, you get nonstop heel slip in this, at least for me. And so how does that compare to the Sole of Airs? Well, the Sole of Airs isn't leather, but it's a lot thicker and it's a lot stronger because the Doc Martens are only half a millimeter of fake suede leather versus the Sole of Airs is still a fake leather, but it's significantly thicker at two millimeters thick. So you have three or you have four times the amount of material to wear through and it's just a lot better for material because of the structure of the fake leather compared to the docks. And then the other aspect of the lining, which is in the vamp, they're very similar. The, the Doc Martens and Solivares have a similar fabric. The Solivares are just a little bit thicker, leading to potentially more durability. But the biggest difference on the inside of this boot comes from what you're actually standing on. Because Docs come with a glued in, fake leather topped, cheap foam insole, versus the Solivares, are just a half sock liner, a lot more like a boot with the latex foam underneath. And then the rest of the boot, you're just standing on the fiberboard itself. But when you pull this insole out of the Doc Martens, you still have fiberboard, but it's a lot thinner at two millimeters thick on the docks and three millimeters thick on the sole of air. So you're gonna get a little bit more compression out of the sole of air, you're gonna get more durability, and you're just gonna get a lot more footprint inside of the boot because you have more material that's gonna hold that shape and it's not gonna break down and split like cheap fiberboard is gonna do. And then maybe the biggest difference between these two is this little patch right here where the fiberboard on the Doc Martin stops, turns into a lot softer, more malleable fabric, and then continues back with the fiberboard. And this is gonna be more comfortable initially. It's gonna give you a little bit easier break in, but over time, this is gonna be significantly less durable than a full sheet of fiberboard like in the Solivares. Because all you have to do is wear out this little teeny stitch anywhere in the inside of here, and then your boot's gonna start falling apart from the inside out. So from the inside, you can see how the docks are gonna be easier to break in, a little bit softer underfoot initially, but they're not gonna be nearly as durable and last as long. Compared to the sole of airs, they're gonna be a little bit harder to break in, and a little bit more uncomfortable initially, but they're gonna be significantly more durable over the long run. And then to the biggest difference between these boots that you would never ever know, unless you literally cut them in half, that's the internal components in the midsole. Because in the Doc Martens, you have a single layer of really cheap foam for the midsole, it has a little bit of a backer on it, and then you have this little integrated piece at the ball of your foot. Versus the sole of Ares has a full length felted midsole that's made out of this, and no integrated foam piece at the ball of your foot. And instead, it's structured and latticed like the rest of the outsole. Foam is mostly air, felt is mostly felt, and with a little bit of air in between. So when you compress foam, it bottoms out really bad. Versus felt, you're always gonna have some material that's separating you from the structured outsole. So you can start to see why people consider sole of Ares to be a true boot, and a lot of people consider Doc Martens to just be a glorified sneaker. And one of the biggest differences between boots and sneakers is the shank. If you don't know what a shank is, it's the structural piece that bridges the gap from the heel towards the ball of your foot, structuring that little gap that's caused by the heel. Because if you don't have it in there, what happens is exactly what happens to Docs, where you start compressing that, the, the boot turns into kind of a boat looking shape. You lose all the arch support and if anything, it makes them significantly more uncomfortable because of that high pressure spot caused by the heel. 
So in the soul of theirs, they've fixed that or brought back what Doc Martens used to do, which is put in a wooden shank. And a wooden shank is not nearly as durable as a steel shank or a fiberglass shank or even a composite shank. But as long as you're not stomping on shovels and you're not climbing on ladders all day, Solovair claims that they very, very rarely see a broken shank when boots come back in for a resole. Do I believe that's true? I think it is probably true because I think most people aren't working in Solovairs. And I think if you treat them like casual boots, you're not gonna break your shank. And then to the final difference between the Solovairs and the Doc Martens is the outsole. And I initially thought that the sole of air is gonna be thicker, I thought it was gonna be heavier lugs, but it turns out they're actually about the same depth of lugs and same thickness. But the real difference comes in on how hard the outsoles are, because they're both PVC and they're known for wearing out fairly quickly, and the hardness of docks come in at a 55 shore A, which is a little bit on the soft side for, for boots. You know, with really heavy duty boots, we see like 70 to 80 shore A, versus the sole of airs come in at a 65 to 70 shore A. So the sole of airs should last a good amount longer than the Doc Martens, solving that one issue that most people have with docks where that outsole just flattens out after like a month worth of wear. And to see if there's any response difference between the two, we did the bar drop test. The, the Doc Martens bounced up 3.5 inches, the sole of airs bounced up 4.5 so even a little bit more responsive out of the sole of airs. And I think that's partly due to the, the lattice structure that's on the inside of this outsole. Because the cool thing about docks is you can actually see through the outsole. And if you look at the Doc Martens, you can see it's a very square, very big lattice structure with a relief for that little piece of foam versus the sole of airs. It's a lot finer of a lattice structure, which causes the sole of airs to have far fewer high pressure spots because there's just a lot more structure on the inside that's being evenly compressed versus these big open squares where you could understand how if you put pressure in the middle of that square, you'd have a really dead spot surrounded by a high pressure spot, which in my opinion should make the sole of airs internal components last a lot longer and make the whole boot more comfortable for the extended wear of the boot. So to answer the rest of the questions which involve the construction and this thing being heat welded together and the fake stitch that Solovair has on the outside of their boot, we need to cut this in half to be able to fully test it and explain what's going on, on the inside of Solovairs. Father's Day is just around the corner and it's time to get your dad some morning dram because your dad is probably sick of drinking the same coffee over and over and over. Probably doesn't even put cream or sugar in it like a real man. And the cool thing about the Morning Dram is you can actually introduce some new flavors to his palate because they age their coffee beans in X whiskey barrels to give the coffee just a hint of whiskey flavors. No alcohol, but it's just enough that it gives you that flavor, it gives you that aroma, like I've said in every single one of these ads, because we do a lot of ads for the Morning Dram because you guys like them. So pretty clearly you guys are digging the Morning Dram and that's partly because of the smell, it smells so freaking good. In the morning when I walk in the shop, it smells like leather, coffee, and whiskey. What more could you ask for? And one of my favorite parts about the Morning Dram is Tommy, the owner, who won best, best whiskey bar in America in 2021. He's a boot nerd, he loves the channel, and that's how we connected, is he saw the channel, was like, hey, I like boots, I like coffee, I bet your guys do too, let's do some ads together. And they have a couple cool boxes that are perfect for Father's Day. They have their new Scotch box, so it's $85, it includes a scotch barrel aged coffee, a handheld grinder, a stainless steel dripper, and a ceramic mug. And they also have their barrel aged box that has one bag of each of the four bar barrel aged coffees, scotch, bourbon, rye, and filled and sounds American single malt. You can give your dad a great variety. Or if you're a dad yourself, or you wanna be a dad, buy yourself one of these. Why not? It's a good, it's a good opportunity to try something new. It's a cool brand. So use the link in the description and get your dad some new flavor profiles. Get him some excitement in his life. Get the morning dram, so check him out below. And thanks again to the morning dram. All right, we got them cut in half, and if you're not subscribed, just push that little subscribe button. It's a free click for you. YouTube never shows you what you're subscribed to anyway, and it makes a huge difference for the channel. And if you want some supplementary, some extracurricular watching, 
of Doc Martens and Solar Bears. Go check out the Iron Snails breakdowns. He's got a really cool channel. I love. He's one of my favorite creators in this space, so check him out below. Let's see what's inside. So if you remember in the Doc Martin video, this outsole came off like I was tearing tissue paper. So let's see if the Solo Bears fare any better. Because honestly, the Doc Martens were so shockingly easy to tear apart. And if you remember in the very first Solo Bear video I did like three years ago, the upper was tearing away before the outsole. This seems like it's a lot harder to tear apart. Oh, see, so yeah, I pulled the, I actually ripped the Goodyear welt before the actual welt ripped from that heat sealing. So I think what I'm gonna do now is cheat a little bit. So I'm just gonna start the tear, with a little, little help from the knife to see if once it starts going, does it go as easily as the Doc Martens did? Okay, so it started. So let's see how easy it is to actually tear it. Yeah. Okay, so it's significantly harder, but I can tear it. It's way harder. Yeah. Okay, it's going now. So, compare these two shots of me tearing the Doc Martens versus the Solivares. You can see that the Solivares are heat welded together significantly better. And part of that is due to the surface area that is used to heat weld. So right here at the toe, you can see that these Solivares have a flat plane of about 14, 15 millimeters versus the Doc Martens only have seven to 11 with a sawtooth pattern. And the actual area that was fused is about 12 millimeters on the Solivare versus about six at the thinnest on the Doc Martens. So there's a huge difference between these boots. Doc Martens are known for splitting and cracking, especially in cold weather, as you wear them, because the only thing holding this outsole on is the melting of the PVC welt to the PVC outsole that is done with a really, like a red hot knife that they use to, to bond those two layers together. And there's a clear performance difference between these two boots, so much so that I would never really trust a pair of docks because these are so easy to tear apart and this was really hard to tear apart. Still not as strong as if it was a true Goodyear welt where the stitches went through the midsole into the insole with the stitching holding it together, but this is stronger than I even anticipated from Solivare. So now to the final questions. Are Solivares actually better? Are they the real Doc Martens? Are they Doc Martin killers? I would say yes. Solivare is better in basically every single way. And that's because the Solivares, they've got a significantly better counter cover, a better leather that's thicker, more conditioned, and should be longer lasting. And the biggest fell spot in docks with this being heat welded is fixed by the Solivares. So this breakdown really did confirm that Solivares are real boots and Doc Martens are sneakers disguised as boots. But are they worth the extra $50? Well, you get them made in England by the same guys that made the traditional famous docks from the 80s and 90s. And you get a little bit better materials, a little better construction, but is that worth the extra 50 bucks? For me, it is. I would way rather spend 50 bucks and not have any of the fail spots, any of the BS going on the inside of, of docks and, and they're made in the UK by the people that made the real docks. But there is one caveat, and that is that Solivare cannot put the yellow stitch around the outside of their boot because Doc Barton trademarked that and Solivare cannot use it. So if that one yellow stitch matters to you more than anything else, it might not be worth the extra 50 bucks. So let me know what you guys think and your experiences in these if you've owned them and thank you guys so much for everything you do. And if this video does well, I'd like to compare it to the Made in England docks to really see who makes the truest Made in England Doc Martin boots. So help this video out, subscribe, do all the other stuff because that's how we decide if we're gonna do the next video. So thank you guys, see ya.